The last time the Leafs and Penguins met, the score was 7 nothing in favor of the Toronto Maple Leafs. What will happen tonight? We'll break that down as well as the Vancouver Canucks and Vegas Golden Knights. Guys, welcome in. Happy Monday. We are here live on Wager Talk TV. This is Puck Time. And Carm, I'm pumped, man. We were saying before the show started, it's nice to have some playoff races going on right now. And of course, must win does not always mean will win. But right now, this Penguins team is finding a way to battle their way. And, and right now, they actually sit in a spot in the postseason. How was your weekend, Carm? Good to see you. Um, weekend was really good. Uh, NHL went really well. Um, 5% winner as well, too. So I was pretty happy about that. It's been a uh, very good run. I think the last, just the last three days, I think, is or four days is 7-1-1. Uh, and, one and 2024 post-All-Star break has been uh, phenomenal. Uh, 44 units uh, up in the NHL was number one. Uh, wager talk. Uh, still a lot of work to do, man. I'm loving this, uh, Andrew, uh, people are waiting for the playoffs. This is the playoffs right now because you're looking at some of these games. And I know you're, you're talking about like the Pittsburgh Penguins right now, like they're ninth, a point back of Detroit. They're on the outside looking in, but this team has won four straight. And anyone who watched that game against Tampa Bay, that was a phenomenal game because it was against a very good Tampa team. It looked like the Pens had Tampa um, dead and buried. And then like the Undertaker Boom, 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 three goals, four, four, and it set it up for um, some late drama, and Pittsburgh Pittsburgh got there. Uh, an important win for Pittsburgh. they got a tough schedule, Andrew, before we get into this game, because they've got the Leafs up tonight, uh, and this is uh, Pittsburgh's fifth game, in, uh, fifth game in eight nights for them. So um, this late in the season, that kind of takes its toll. But these guys are running on, uh, on adrenaline right now and playing extremely well. Then a, a big four-pointer against the Detroit Red Wings. That in itself, um, if that game is settled in regulation, that's a huge one. They go, they have the Bruins, Nashville, and the New York Islanders. They don't have a team that they are playing the rest of the season who isn't sitting in a playoff spot or isn't in a positioning or playoff battle. Um, but, you know, I, Andrew, I look at this one, and it, N N Delkovic's played well. He's come in. He's played extremely well. Whether he's the starter tonight, we'll have to see because uh, none of the goalies have been named as of yet in, uh, in both games. And it's looking as it's going to be Samsonov for the Leafs. This one opened at 150, uh, went up about 10 cents. I thought it might go the other way because of the Pittsburgh money coming in. But the Leafs are in a battle as well, too. They're four points. Um, the, sorry, they're five points back of Florida for that number two seed. Boston is pretty much locked up uh, the Atlantic. They're four points back of florida you want home ice and leaves have two games in hand so they can make up four points with a couple of wins and then they play florida um next week uh they do the florida double they play florida and then they play tampa bay the next night and those games can decide whether they win uh or they they capture that number two seed you want to have a home ice advantage, at least in the first round of the playoffs. So it's not lost on people. I know people are talking about it's time to rest your starters, the leaps, uh, time to rest your starters. No, it's not time to rest the stars. It's not, not time to manage the minutes because home ice is very important for them. Forget about the whole Austin Matthews trying to get 70 goals. That's a side note. The the more important thing for Sheldon Keefe is to have this team uh, um, win home ice and have them ready for the first round of the playoffs against the Florida Panthers because that's going to be um, a one great series. Mitch Marner back. Uh, what he did do is he managed Mitch's minutes uh, on Saturday against the Montreal Canadiens. 17 minutes for him, uh, for a guy who's used to playing uh, upwards of 20 to 22 minutes, 17 minutes. Uh, I think he will be a little more active tonight against Pittsburgh. And, and, and Toronto's playing well. I know Pittsburgh's won four in a row. Toronto's won four of the last five. Toronto's playing well. I think Toronto has to be the play here, Andrew, uh, in this one. And then I'm going to have some player props later uh, for you. But I think that's the, the the right play here is I don't think you're getting as much value on Pittsburgh as you normally would. These teams split their, their two regular season uh, games thus far, each home team winning. Leafs won back in uh, December 7 nothing uh, on a Saturday night, I believe it was, against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, but that's in the past. 
and the past does not dictate the future. So I think the Leafs will be happy with two points. Pittsburgh might be happy getting this game to overtime uh, and then seeing what happens from there and at least picking up a point. So uh, give me the Leafs in this one. Great breakdown, Carm. Uh, we must have been uh, writing our notes out together because I, I feel like uh, not much else to say. You covered a lot of great stuff there. And then the Marner, the minutes restriction, I was going to mention that as well. And uh, Marner has actually gone under his shots total in seven of his last 10 games he's played in. So um, even coming back last game, he was passing the puck around, but seemed a little bit cautious. And I think when they brought him back, they don't want cautious. They they want him to be fully back, fully engaged, but obviously easing into it. But it's a great point you mentioned, and I think it is important for everybody to understand that this is not just a big game for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Do we love how it worked out, how Pittsburgh has these big games of the rest of the season and some, some games against other teams they're competing with? Absolutely, we love that. But it is still a good game for Toronto to try and boost their, their way up. They want to get the home ice. They still have things to play for. And also, they're in great current form as well. Pittsburgh's in great current form. Toronto's in great current form. And it's a good point mentioned by Carm about the price here. A little bit peculiar here uh, for a Leafs team to be playing this type of price despite the good type of hockey that the Pittsburgh Penguins are finally playing. You know, the way that Pittsburgh's playing right now is I think kind of how their coaching staff and how Kyle Dubas expected them to be playing the whole season. You know, the, the, the leaders, the top guys being the top guys, Eric Carlson playing well on the blue line and the bottom six guys just being hard to play against. They don't need goals out of them. They just need them to go out there and get the puck deep and, and, you know, kill some time, burn some energy, draw some energy for the team, drop the mitts a few times, maybe lay some body checks. And right now that's what Pittsburgh's team is doing. Uh, but Carm, Monday night game here for the Maple Leafs. You know where I'm going. It's a total. And I'm going under six and a half. I'm staying away from the side in this one. And I know you take a look at a lot of the games recently for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And they have been overs, actually. They've, they've found their scoring touch, right? It's been four or five, even six goals. So I understand that I'm kind of going against a little mini trend here. But I do think this one in particular does have that feeling that Pittsburgh probably knows that they're going up against a team that's got a superstar like Matthews and other guys that can score. You probably do not want to try and trade goals with them for 60 minutes long, right? I don't think that's a recipe for success. So whether or not Toronto or Pittsburgh wins, I'm locking in the under here. And you mentioned Ndalkovic. Um, Samsonov's been playing very well lately. I think both goaltenders can lock things down. I like the under six and a half. And, uh, I'll give out one prop bet that I like, and that's Brian Rust to record a point. The guy was really quiet for many weeks. All of a sudden now he's got a point in eight of his last 10 games, and his number is only minus 130 uh, to get a point for the Pittsburgh Penguins. You got to love that number for a guy playing some great hockey right now. Andrew, uh, I watched that game against Tampa, and Rust was all over the light, uh, the ice. He missed a couple on the uh, side of the net. He looked like he wanted to head headbutt a puck into the net on one of them where I think <laughs> Sid got it across to him. This is what you want. At this time of the season, you want the guys on your team 100% committed to the game from start to finish. And and, and the Pens have come out uh, in the first period and played well. Like, uh, they, they get off to good starts. We see some teams not get off to good starts uh, in first periods, they 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 fall into a hole, and sometimes it is it's near impossible to get to get out of those ones. Um, uh, uh, one more note about this game, uh, and then a couple other things. But uh, I mentioned, you know, it's it's the fifth game in in eight nights for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, a little bit of travel in there, but again, the adrenaline when you're winning games and you're in a playoff race, um, you don't feel those legs, right? They you go out there and you put in your shift. And uh, you try and win your shift, go to the bench and let the next line win their shift. The Leafs, I, I searched um, different scenarios with the Leafs um, last night and uh, th and this morning as far as like when they play their best. Uh, and it comes out to one day's rest. Both teams are on one day's rest, having played on Saturday. The Leafs record on one day's rest is 23, 10 and 6. By far, their best record of whether it's back-to-backs, uh, whether it's one day's rest, uh, two, three, or, or more, their best record is on one day's rest. It's the one that's most common to teams, of course. Average goals scored in those 39 games, 7.07 .07, uh, 
goals scored uh, in those 39 games. Um, so, Andrew, maybe that uh, that helps your point of looking for some goals in uh, tonight's game. By the way, the 6-60 six and 60 on Saturday goes 3-3. Uh, three and three. Uh, It wasn't great. It wasn't horrible. Um, off of a couple four and two and five and one uh, weeks, uh, we're still in search of that elusive six to zero. We're going to give it one last shot on Friday. But man, let me, let me ask you something, guys out there. Why do people like? There's one guy. The first game loses. He literally posted 20 seconds after the game ended. I'm not even going to name his name. Like you, you got to be like this small to like go in and post about a play losing in a free six and 60 segment. It's just like the stuff you see on Twitter. It's why I don't hang out on Twitter uh, or the X or whatever you want to call it much. I just want to talk to my clients and they know how to get a hold of me and DM me. Those are the only ones I want to talk to because you look at the way some of these people talk to Kelly, Ariel, to any women, men are intimidated by women. Would you talk, how would you feel if someone talked about your daughter the same way as you guys talk? And I'm not referencing the guys in our chat, but people in general. Uh, how would you feel if people talked about your daughter the same way as you attack women on Twitter? It is it is a, a horrible. It's just, um, it is what it is. I have, to get, I have to get that off my mind. You want to talk smack to me? I don't care. Big deal. I'm a big man. I can take it. Um, but with that said, Andrew, let's uh, let's get to the second game. Yeah, Carmen, I, despite just being two games tonight, there are two great ones. So we have the Vancouver Canucks and the Vegas Golden Knights. Minus 125 uh, is the price tag on this one uh, in favor of the home team. We are seeing a lower total in this one as well. And Carm, some superstar power here in this game uh, as well. And of course, we're talking about playoff positioning seating and uh, total points overall for these teams in the Western Conference. Well, at this point, it's pretty much just all about who plays who. It's not about who gets in. It's about who plays who, who gets home ice advantage. And that stuff still matters. So you talk about resting players, but also figuring out games that really do matter to your team. And, you know, Karma, I, I look at this Vancouver team. I was looking actually quite a bit at props earlier earlier today. And the Vancouver Canucks have actually really slowed down. And one thing I notice is uh, Roenick has slowed down with his prop. He's got, he hasn't gotten a point in seven of his last 10 games. He's the D partner for, for Hughes. Hughes in general has slowed down his production, jumping into the rush. And I take a look at some of these uh, Vancouver games uh, as of late. It seems like the defensemen just overall are not jumping into the rush. And it's kind of, you know, cooling things down a little bit they're kind of having to they're they're playing more of defensive brand despite what's happening in some of their games i'm just starting to notice that this team is not being that same offensive force and i mentioned at the start of the season that the 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 shooting percentage that vancouver canucks had just was unsustainable they were number one or top three for like the entire first half of the season and, you know, it, it, as a Canadians fan, it reminds me of Cole Caulfield because Cole Caulfield, the first year of his career, every shot he took went in, you know, and this year he is like the bottom five as far as shooting percentage for forwards with over 200 shots. You look at Vancouver right now, they scored just two against Arizona, three against Anaheim, one against Dallas, two against Los Angeles. They're kind of losing that offensive ability. However, I, I like how they're playing defense right now. In some games, they are kind of, you know, stepping up, making life difficult. And I like the rapid revenge angle. That to me is something that will always be good to me. It's not the revenge factor. It's the rapid revenge. These teams just played a handful of days ago. Vegas scored six on Vancouver. Um, but right now we're seeing some defensive issues for Vegas. We also have goaltending issues right now. Uh, as Logan Thompson, who knows? I mean, they're saying he's available today, but we know he kind of got injured uh, in practice. We know about Aiden Hill. He's out indefinitely. And the defense overall hasn't been great. I mean, Arizona took seven goals uh, off this Vegas team, and they're not going to be happy about it. But I still think that this rapid revenge spot benefits Vancouver. I like them playing at home tonight. And I know the Golden Knights will not be happy but Carm, I've been burnt a lot this season, taking teams off bad losses, thinking that they will instantly respond. 
And sometimes, despite coming off a really bad loss, it doesn't always mean you're going to respond the next game. And I think Vancouver has their number tonight in this revenge spot. So Vancouver on the side play for me uh, is the move here. Andrew, uh, I'm going to have a player prop as the uh, as the free play at the end of the show, but I'm going to talk about the game. And one of us is going to win uh, in this one because I I think I'm going to go against the market. The market here has been Vancouver from the opener. They've taken some money, not a lot of money, but the money's coming on 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 uh, on the Canucks. Uh, but I want to draw a line through that game that Vegas played against Arizona. It uh, it was a bad game, and sometimes uh, when it's you when a team loses like that and uh, you just got to draw a line through it because they could play that game 10 times and Vegas is probably going to win eight of them uh, and they're not going to blow leads. It's just one in which the they did. But you draw a line through and I think this is a big game. It's a it's a big game for, for Vegas still. Uh, they haven't sewn up a playoff spot, but it's pretty much done because the St. Louis Blues can't seem to beat the San Jose Sharks. Uh, six points in three games. They dropped uh, all three games to San Jose. When the Blues look back at their season, they can look at the fact that they couldn't beat San Jose. Uh, and that those six lost points uh, likely will end up costing them a playoff spot. The goaltending, as far as this one goes, um, right now it's showing uh, Thompson, but we'll see. It won't be Aiden Hill, but he's supposed to be traveling with the team, is what uh, I heard. And Thomas Hurdle is going to play tonight, his first game for Vegas. Uh, he gets to play the, in the last six games and get the guy ready for the playoffs as well, too, one of the pickups. You can say what you want to say about long-term injury reserve, but it is what it is uh, right now. It's a rule that uh, teams take advantage of until the league changes it. So with that said, it's not illegal. It's one that teams use to their favor. Hurdle back in the lineup. I want to take, uh, you know, as far as this one goes, uh, you know, I'm looking at it. And the thing with Vancouver is they've held together well. But uh, I have a little bias on this one, guys. And I'm going to be straight with you guys. The bias lies in this. I want the Edmonton Oilers to finish first in the Pacific. I don't want them playing the Vegas Golden Knights in the uh, first round of the playoffs, which is is possible. Edmonton right now sits uh, three points back of the Vancouver Canucks with a game in hand. Uh, And I like Edmonton's schedule to close out. Uh, as far as Vancouver, they've held together and uh, they've done well considering it's been Casey DeSmith. When you're missing your number one goalie, and he was eligible to come off the long-term injury reserve, Thatcher Demko, this weekend, and uh, this past weekend, and they didn't take him off the long-term injury, or they took him off the long-term injury reserve, but he's not going to play a game for a while. Probably another, you'll, you'll probably see him just before the end of the season. They're going to get him a little bit of action and get him in there. But the guy's 34, 13, and 2 with a 247 goals against average. When you remove that goalie um, out of your lineup for a string of games like uh, like they have thus far, Vancouver, and you're still able to be at the top of the Pacific, you've got a good team. You've got a well-coached team. So, you know, with that said, before he comes back, I just think they're overworking Casey the Smith. They have no choice. It's either him or is it Silvos, the other goalie, Andrew? Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's one of the two. And I think Vegas off that loss are going to be a little heated and they're going to be looking to win this one. And I think they get the job done. So I'm going to take the plus money with Vegas and hope that some Vancouver money continues to come in so I can get a little more plus money on this one. One team is off a game where they gave up seven. One team's off a game where they gave up six. Uh, Neither team will be happy in this one. That's for sure. So uh, like I said, Carm, one thing I've been happy about lately is that the, the days that we've had just two or three games, they've actually been good games. Like I feel like a month or two ago, it was like we'd have two games and it would be like Anaheim versus San Jose and like some bad, you know, bad games playing. But now we actually have just two games on tap for tonight, but they're actually uh, quite entertaining games here, guys. So prop plays, side plays, totals. Thanks for being here with us on the show. Uh, please hit the like button if you're watching on YouTube. It helps us more than you guys know. It really does. We appreciate it. And uh, subscribe to our channel if you're new. We are live every single weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern time across all kinds of social networks here on Puck Time. 
Carmen, I know you have a few topics you want to run through as well, but I got a question to fire at you. And uh, this more goes for the Leafs and Penguins game. But, you know, it, it might seem backwards to some people, but I actually find myself betting more puck lines later in the year and in the playoffs than I do at the start of the season and in the regular season. My question to you is that, you know, if the Leafs are up, let's say 2-1 late in the game on the Penguins, the Penguins are either tying it up or they're getting an empty netter, I think, or the Leafs are scoring an empty. And I know empty net goals are way down this year. Guys have finally started just kind of dumping the puck and, and not wasting their energy trying to score. But would you say tonight that if people are taking the Leafs, I know you don't want to be greedy, but would you argue that, you know, if they win tonight, they're probably not going to just win a one goal game? Because the value is amazing on that that puck line there. Uh, it, it is. The value is there just because of like how Pittsburgh is playing. But um, sometimes you have to, you, you got to look at both teams. You know, the game is in Toronto. Uh, if Pittsburgh, you know, the first period is going to tell you a lot about this game. If Pittsburgh comes out and jumps on the Leafs, if the Leafs aren't ready to play from that puck drop, Pittsburgh's going to jump on them. Pittsburgh are playing for a playoff spot. And I get it, Toronto, as I mentioned, are playing for positioning uh, and trying to get home ice. But, um, you know what I mean? It's like poking that bear, Andrew. Uh, Sidney Crosby's carrying this team. They're playing extremely well. Uh, you look at this team, it's, it seems like every time they come off the ice, every shift is happy after a goal or, or, or what they're doing. And they could have easily folded against Tampa Bay when they gave up three goals in the third period uh, in a four, to make a 4-4. Four, four, and they were resilient enough to score and win that game. And uh, that's the mark of a, a team that's playing extremely well. The first period will dictate it. If the Leafs can come out, and establish that first 20 minutes of the game, and maybe those third and fourth lines uh, for the Leafs have to go out there and do the work for them. Uh, as the game goes on, if the Leafs can get a lead, um, I'm with you. Uh, it, it can turn into a puck line win. It's one of those ones where I will do it sometimes with, uh, and my clients know this, where I, I'll i take four units and I will divide them between the Leafs um line uh the money line let's say that's 150 or 160 uh two uh two units on that and then uh, another two units on the puck line so it, it um you can end up with a push on that uh but you you pretty much bring down the amount of money that you're investing instead of putting four units at minus 160 you're getting two units at minus 160 and two units at plus money um so it uh, it protects your bottom line a little bit um, with a lot of upside as well, too. So that's one way of I, I look at it, Andrew. I'd be curious to reach out to Ralph to see, like, at, at this point in the season, like going back to last year, you know, how many games are one goal games? How many games are, you know, decided by by at least, you know, teams covering the puck line and in the playoffs as well? You know, people think playoffs. They think tight games, but sometimes it could be game one is five, one and game two, the other team wins three, two, right? You know, three, one. And, and so sometimes the puck line could kind of be beneficial because the empty net goal is there. The opportunity is there for that. Carmen, we've got Benny eight here in our uh, YouTube shorts live right now with us. He cashed or he's looking to cash a capitals to not make the playoffs ticket. He got that price at plus plus one fifteen for a hundred bones. Looking to cash that tomorrow, and that's a pretty good price uh, for a team that you know snuck into the playoffs at one point. And I'm assuming that's when he bet it. And uh, as of now, they've kind of been just making their way out. And it's a good example, Carm, of teams that just cannot—you can't maintain that that type of hockey for three weeks. Like Washington's been in playoff mode for like the past month. It feels like they got hot, they won like eight of ten, and then they really slowed down. So Benny, eight. We hope you. You uh, cash that ticket. And uh, another one here from the uh, YouTube Shorts Live, Vegas minus one and a half is the only way to go. So they're on your side, Carm. Yeah, Andrew, I, I want to I mention, so the um, um, as far as Benny's goes, so Benny has the opportunity of, because if you look at the current line, and I'd given out um, Washington to, to miss the playoffs, and I said it might take a while to get plus money on the yes, 
um, if you wanted to get out of your bet. But the plus money on Washington to make the playoffs now is plus 240. Uh, and, you know, I don't feel they're going to make the playoffs. But you look at it if you, you know, if you wanted to hedge out that bet. Uh, and it's always comes down to the size of your wager and whether you're uncomfortable with holding on to it to the rest of the NHL season. So um, you put $61. Let's say you put 100 bucks at plus 115. That's what you have right now on, um, on, on the Washington Capitals to miss the playoffs at plus 115. You can put $61.43 on the Washington Capitals to make the playoffs your total investment is now $215. Your guaranteed profit is $53.57. That's on a $100 bet. That gets multiplied the bigger your bet is. But if you're looking to hedge, that is one way to lock in a profit if you want to do so. Um, I very rarely hedge, Andrew, uh, unless, because um, a lot of my bets, uh, the ones I do hedge are, soccer ones in which i have teams that are like 20 to 1 to win uh i had chelsea 20 to 1 to win the champions league i didn't hedge it out i ended up winning that one i had real madrid at 18 to 1 and then 33 to 1 after they lost the first leg uh of their i think their semi-final match i didn't hedge that out um real madrid won the champions league it's a feel as well too you look at a team schedule and you look at the way they're playing and sometimes you say to yourself i'm not going to hedge this out and of course, the last one was I had Italy to uh, win the Euros uh, at 12 to 1. And I didn't hedge that out because no self respecting Italian would hedge out uh, thinking that their team is going to lose the Euros. Viva Italia. <laughs> Carm, uh, conference That's winners. I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I like it. I like it. Colorado right. plus 350, Edmonton plus 380, Dallas plus 450. Eastern Conference, we got three to one. For the Canes, plus three fifty for the Panthers. Rangers, right there at four to one. As far as the conferences, divisions, uh, anything that sticks out to you that's worthy of mentioning today. You know, I, I like that price, Andrew. Uh, I don't. Uh, well, I kind of like the price on the Canes. This is going to be a, it's such a tough conference, the Eastern Conference. Um, Marco D'Angelo was so nice to me when I was in Vegas for the Super Bowl, uh, hooked me up with a room and stuff. And before I left, Andrew, I gave him a ticket. It was a, a three-team parlay futures bets. And one was the Canes to win the Eastern Conference at plus 500. The other one was uh, Manchester City to win the Champions League at plus uh, 260. And then the last one was France to win the Euros this summer. Uh, if Marco wins that ticket, uh, the guy can take his wife on a nice vacation because uh, the odds on that one are extremely enticing. But to your point of which one do I like the most, the Canes, I think the value is gone on the Canes right now at plus 300 uh, because it's such a tough conference. New York Rangers don't look like they're losing anytime soon to anyone, but they're going to have to play the Canes uh in that second round of the playoffs it looks like uh, if they both get there um maybe the leafs andre hate to say it's uh plus 700 uh do they make it past the second round uh last year was the first time they made it past the first round in like 18 or 19 years um boston has value the bruins just keep beating up teams they keep winning so um i would say that the it lies in probably the Bruins, Andrew. If you looked at the top four, the Canes, Florida, the Rangers, and the Bruins, value-wise, and the best price is on the Boston Bruins at plus 500 because the Canes and the Rangers are going to have to meet each other. So one of them is going to unfortunately die an untimely death. Uh, Boston is going to play a wild card team, and then they're going to play the winner of Florida and Toronto. And they're going to be favored in that series as well, too. So we're looking at if they do what they're supposed to do, they'll be in the conference finals. So one other thing for you, Andrew, I'm going to throw this in there. Uh, we're stretching this show out. Our producers like, how do you guys talk 30 minutes on two games? Is look at teams the year after they have won the President's Trophy. Teams choke in the year they win the President's Trophy. The next year they, they win. Tampa Bay, President's Trophy winners don't win it. Uh, Stanley Cup, they win it the next couple of seasons. Colorado, 
Stanley uh, um, President Trophy winners don't win it. They win the Stanley Cup. Uh, Andrew, it's a progressive thing. It just seems like they do better in the uh, in the year following their the, um, their failure as the President's Trophy winners. So, who won the President's Trophy last year? Boston Bruins. Who won the President's Trophy the year before? The Florida Panthers, and they made it to the Stanley Cup Finals the following year. So maybe there's something to it. muted sorry Carm. i was muted there i was uh, i'm hearing some noises there in the background um my favorite thing about the conference bets compared to like divisions or make the playoffs or points and things like that is that we all know playoff hockey is different than regular season hockey right and, and so you look at a few teams right now and i would say still to this day i i will i will die on the hill that the the Tampa Bay Lightning at 12 to 1 and at 25 to 1 to win the whole thing is just a price that I don't understand. And I get why it's the way it is as far as, you know, the teams ahead of them. But we always talk about the playoffs being experience. And I understand maybe this team's gotten older. They've had to trade players. They've had to move off guys. But for right now, at 12 to 1, that's not a bad number. I don't think they're beating the Colorado Avalanche or Dallas Stars or those teams in the West, but they could battle through and they could win their first round matchup. It would not surprise me. Um, and you, know, you, you look at the Boston Bruins at five to one. That one is a bit intriguing to me just because last year being the president's trophy winners and losing in the first round to the Panthers this year, it looks like they will not get the Panthers. So, I mean, you, you put those two teams together, right? The lightning and the Bruins, I, I think one of those teams can, 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 you know, make some noise. I think we see some motion out of those guys. And I think that you just need one to get on a run, win two rounds, you know, set yourself up for a pretty good number. Although I love this Hurricanes team. They haven't really proven to us over the past few years. They can make that next step. Hopefully for their sake, this year is the year. But uh, yeah, I think the Bruins right now, five to one to win the East is a, probably a pretty good bet. And uh, you'll, we'll see if they can keep it going. Tampa Bay is going to be live, though, as well. I think you might have said it on one episode uh, we've had recently here, Kyra, one, one puck time. I mean, we got to take, like, every series to go over six and a half games. Or we could probably parlay, like, most series to go over five and a half games at least because there's not going to be many that are 4-1 or 4 nothing. That's for sure. It's going to be a lot of tight series. And with that, sometimes you want the plus money. And I think that if you want a favorite, you maybe wait to see what happens if they can lose game one and get a better price in game two. But uh, we'll talk about all that stuff closer to playoff time when the actual matchups are out. But uh, what do you have? Uh, best bet material, Carmen, anything to add before that? Yeah, I, and I'm going to say this, Andrew, because I because, you know, the point of like Tampa Bay, right? So you look at Tampa Bay. And when you look at the standing, sometimes it shows Tampa Bay in six, but essentially they are in seventh because <clears throat> they are the fourth place team uh, in the Atlantic. So uh, they're currently in a wild card spot. And I think they're at, at this point, I, uh, they're four points back of back of the Leafs. Leafs have a game in hand. I don't see them climbing into, into third. I think they had a shot had they beaten Pittsburgh in their last game. So who is Tampa going to get in the first round, Andrew? They're going to get... In all likelihood, the New York Rangers or the Boston Bruins. It is unbelievable that you head into you get two great teams meeting in the first round of the playoffs, but that's what's going to happen. Um, I'll be interesting to see what the price is because you cannot make the New York Rangers or the Boston Bruins anything north of minus two hundred in a series against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, I may have to die on that hill with you, buddy, because uh this this is a team that has won two stanley cups made it to a third one as you mentioned and yeah sure one was in a shortened COVID season but they still got the job done they won the cup um they're not as tired as the press says they are they're only 0.1 uh as far as the average age of the team um they're only 0.1 uh ahead of the ahead of the leafs as far as age goes so um pretty much the same age as the leafs leafs are young apparently. Um, so with that said, Andrew, um, Carm, really quick, really quick. I'm on. We've got another, yes, really quick. 
We got another another yeah, go. question Where here we? from Where the YouTube Shorts feed. Are there any teams that could pull off a Cinderella story like the Panthers did last year, East or West? Well, I mean, I did yes. just mention Tampa Bay. I don't know if that's really the team. I, I, I think personally, and I don't think it's as big of a Cinderella for Florida uh, as Florida was last year. You know, Carm, I've said it before. I think Winnipeg. Winnipeg or LA, those are two teams that you know, you know I'm narrowed in on, and I just think that they play defensive hockey like the playoffs are meant to be played, which is why I've got futures in on both of them, and I think that one of them could upset their opponent in the first round, and, and we'll see if it happens or not, but I think if you want your Cinderella, you got to pick a team that's going to win defensive games. Every one of Florida's games last year when they were upsetting teams was all low scoring, and I personally think those are two teams that could do it. Yes, I can see that. I'm going to go a different route with you, Andrew, because right now they are, um, right now they are a wild card team. Um, but who's to say the Nashville Predators cannot uh, pull off the upset? Uh, right now, the Nashville Predators, if the if the playoffs started right now, the Nashville Predators would be playing the Vancouver Canucks in the first round of the playoffs, and. Listen, when you have a team like the way Nashville's playing right now, uh, they're scoring goals, um, they're getting secondary scoring, um, they're a physical team, and then you have UC Soros in goal who can steal you games when your team isn't playing as well as they should be playing. This is a team that went 18 games in a row, picking up a point, winning 16 of them. Uh, and I get it, they're, they're in a wild card spot. It took them a while to buy into uh, and play the style that uh, Andrew Bernay wants this team to play. But they got there. And I talked about it at the beginning of the season. I thought they would make the playoffs. And I'm glad that they are because uh, I have a future on them. But with that said, Andrew, uh, it was a perfect spot for them to completely uh, toss it in the last game against uh, against New Jersey on the weekend. Uh, and they didn't. They battled back. They win that game in a shootout. Uh, and now off of like two or three losses, they've won two of their last three and they're playing well again. They're on 94 points. They're not going to catch uh, the number three seed in, in the Central, but it doesn't matter. I wouldn't want them to catch the number three seed in the Central. If you're going to start on the road anyways uh, in the first round of the playoffs, I would rather they start against the Vancouver Canucks. And I'm sorry, Canuck fans, no disrespect, but if Thatcher Demko doesn't come back or he isn't the same when he comes back, you're primed for a first round exit if you're if you're playing the Nashville Predators. Garm, I like it. I mean, they're they're probably a pretty good comparison. They're they're probably the comparison of this year's Florida Panthers, that's for sure. Um, the way they play, man, it is super tough. It is super, super tough. Uh, my best bet for the show, I'll just say it right now. It's it's one obviously, I mentioned it already during the show. It's the Vancouver Canucks, the Vancouver Canucks on the money line, minus 125. It's not just revenge, but it's rapid revenge. This team gave up six goals against the Los Angeles Kings their last time out, and I believe they will get it together. I do like some of the defensive efforts they've had lately. Some goaltending trouble right now in Vegas with both guys being a little bit banged up, but it looks like Logan Thompson could be the guy between the pipes for Vegas tonight. And their defensive struggles continue. They allowed seven in the last game against the Coyotes. They will not be happy, but it does not mean they'll win tonight. I'm going to take the Vancouver Canucks on the money line, guys. Uh, some baseball action going up after the show. And uh, you heard everything I like today in the NHL here on Puck Time. Back over to you, Carm. Andrew, I, we're, I'm sending you a, a message because I, I think it's absolutely hilarious um, what... Um, the noises coming out, but uh, listen, guys, a couple, uh, three plays up. I'm going to give you one of them right now. Um, it's a 2% play. It's a player prop. I have three plays up for tonight. I'm going to try and keep this run going because it's been very good. I want to finish the regular season off strong uh, and then let's have a great playoffs. Uh, I'm going to go with the same game tonight that Andrew's on they're talking about the Vancouver game, and I'm going to take a, a player shot prop. I'm going to take Jack Eichel over three and a half minus 130. Eichel's gone over the number in 15 of his last 20 games, um, which is a, a great number if you're betting it and you're playing low vig. And minus 130 on a shop prop is low vig. 
three games against the Vancouver Canucks this season. He's had six shots, six shots, and seven in the last game. Off that bad performance, you got to think that the stars for this team are coming out tonight uh, looking to get a win in Vancouver, but we don't even need that. I just need Eichel to get four of them on goal and uh, we cash this ticket. So uh, Jack Eichel over three and a half shots, minus 130 is your show free play, guys. Jack Eichel has been shooting a ton. Everybody enjoy the games tonight. Two great, great games. Wager talk today coming up at 12 o'clock Eastern time. I believe we will see uh, Carmine on that show today as well. Guys, have a great day. Best of luck. Cash those tickets. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Puck Time.